It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Ravens and the Bucks. All that and more coming up next. The Florida humidity is certain to be a factor in this one. There's no other way to say it, really. It is hot. It is humid here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, I think everybody seems ready to turn the page from 2022. A tough finish down the stretch. Some wacky plays in that loss to the Bengals in the wild card round. They just want to reset and come out swinging in 2023. Oh, I love how you just expressed that. You're exactly right. Reset and come out and play in Ravens football again. And look, they had some anxious moments in the offseason. Now, a sigh of relief. They have their key pieces in place. They're ready to attack. Here's the former Illini kicker, Chase McLaughlin, to get us started. And off we go from Tampa. On the return, Devin DuVernay. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Off the play fake to Dobbins, here's Jackson. And this one is incomplete. Oh, man, that is just a flat miss. He's in the pocket. The protection holds up. He sees his man come free, but maybe he just gets a little excited about the prospect of a long touchdown. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Jackson. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Crowd getting in it a bit already. Here's an early third and ten. They go play action with Jackson. That's going to be caught. It's James Prochet. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. He got 29 yards that time. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back and you end up getting the first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. And Jackson throwing once more. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Well, you know, paramount for this defense is trying to keep Lamar Jackson somewhat contained when he tries to run. They did a pretty good job of it there. And you know what's so difficult for every defense that has to prepare for Lamar Jackson? You have to think and play at the same time. And I know that sounds like something you're supposed to do, but when you have to think about your assignments against him, it often slows down your feet. You don't move as fast. you got to be prepared for this guy every step of the way and then try and match his athleticism. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Jackson. That would complete to Prochet. 
And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 17-yard line. A strong pickup of 11 keeps their drive alive. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. And that'll be taken in by Andrews for a Ravens touchdown. Touchdown. From 17 yards out. And the Ravens are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. Their first passing touchdown of the ball game, and they go to the big tight end in those sure hands, and he provides the score. Certainly looked like they were focused on taking away other weapons, and he certainly made them regret that because he found the soft spot, ended up taking it to the end zone. Nice throw, too, to complete the play. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. And he'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. From the gun, Mayfield. It's caught by Mike Evans. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. First down, Mayfield. Open man, it's Palmer. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. First down now, but that clock rolling. Mayfield looks to throw. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Kyle Hamilton running up from his safety spot and earning the sack. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Clock running. The Bucs try to go quickly and get set. Mayfield now on second down. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long. Then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw, Mayfield. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. 
Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Fourth down, here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the box. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half. And they may be content to take this 7-0 lead into the locker room. We'll see. Jackson on first down. And that is incomplete. Now oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around. And I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. He's on his way. Mark Andrews. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews as the first half is winding down. And the Ravens would extend their lead here just before halftime. Well, this has been a flawless start for them. They score, they get the stop, and they score again, Charles. Complimentary football at its finest. You just mentioned how they got it done. They scored. The defense got the ball back for them. They score again. That's the way you win ball games. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. One more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Jadavian Clowney there on the stop. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. The highlights are fairly one-sided to this point. It's a two touchdown difference here at the break, but I wouldn't call this one over just yet. I think there could still be some fireworks yet to come. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Two touchdown game, 14-0 the score as we get rolling again here in this second half. Fields it right around the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. 
the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive. But get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. If you're going to blitz, I'm likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Well, that's the kind of play that was lacking all the way through the first half. Maybe this can give them a little bit of a spark because they're not out of this game by any stretch. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Stopped by the safety, Kyle Hamilton. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Ravens are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. And that has to be a little bit discouraging because after all their halftime talk, adjustments, and points of emphasis, their first drive ends with an interception. Absolutely aggravating if you're a head coach because you spent all that time, gone through every situation possible, and it still ends in a turnover. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. After the interception, here's Jackson. It's caught, Beckham. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two at the 44-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's the fourth-year man, J.K. Dobbins. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Try to take this home, they'll run. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Let's do our thing. Let's do our thing. You ready? I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll go again with Dobbins, and he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And let's see. The box with 6 DB, so a dime set here on third down.
And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. Brent, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defensive play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was, well, you can't score one point. All they needed was two points. Well, you can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three, and they got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And they did it in shutout fashion. Impressive. Would it be too bland of a statement to say they didn't have the greatest day offensively? I uh, mean, you did know. enough, though. Did enough. But yeah, you're right. Most games, it wouldn't have been enough. So they've got to go into the locker room and applaud their defensive mates and say, guys, you really carried us today. We'll try and get you back next time. But as for today, you guys were nails out there. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Tampa.